Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This is going to be a long video because it's going to be a walkthrough of our mid-year 2022 uh, paper 1. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I'm going through about 17 questions that I feel are very common that you need to know how to do. Okay, so we're going to start. Okay, the first question we are going through uh, is this one. Okay, so uh, this is question 2. Um, take a loan. Simple interest. Now it's very important that you open your eyes and see that it's simple interest, not compound. And then I want interest. I do not want the whole amount he needs to pay. So once you are clear, you're just uh, calculating the interest. So the interest is 3% per year. So I take the starting number. 3 over 100 is 3%, right? And then how many years do I do uh, put in there? 6 years. So it's 5,000 times 3% that's per year and then you times 6 years then you get the answer okay so the next question we are going through will be this one so this one is a test of uh, how well you understand averages right so uh, he got three tests then he's going to take the fourth test and then he said that it's impossible for him to get a mean of 50 marks. That means uh, the average of the four tests is 50. So this is a classic question where you need to um, form an equation. So I start with 50 because I want it to be average of 50, right? So the next question I ask myself is how do I get the average? It is the four tests add together divided by four. So you see, this is the three tests already. So it's one, two, three plus one more which I don't know right so that's the x and the whole thing divided by 4 this I want it to be 50 because I want the average to be 50 so I'm going to simplify and then uh, the 4 I'm going to multiply over so I'm, I'm going to get this and then 98 I'm going to minus and x happens to be 102 so at this moment you must notice that the test is 100 and in order to get average 50 my x, which is the fourth test, needs to be 102. Now, is this possible? It's not possible because the maximum marks you can get is 100. So that's why you conclude that it's impossible in this case. Okay, so the next question we are going through will be this one. This is again similar. You need to sort of form some equation, and again, it happens to be mean and median again. Uh, mean again. So this is a bit more complicated. So the mean height of a group is. 163 so everybody's average is 163 and then there are five more females than male so the the girls got more and then uh, the girls average is 157 the guys average is 174 so uh, no again how do we start because this is difficult because you need to figure out what your x must be there's only one x so in this case it's either the male or the female for my example i chose x to be the male and hence x plus 5 is the female now many people put a female equal to y then you are stuck because you've got one equation with two unknowns you cannot solve that so you need to be you know be a bit more creative if x is x then the, the x is the male then the female got five more so it's x plus five eh? okay so after that i'm going back to the same average thing again so uh to, in order to find the average which is 163 i need the height of all the boys and all the girls add together so you obtain it from here the average times the number of girls the average of the boys times the number of boys and these two numbers will be, uh, will be the total height of everybody then divide by the total number of people so how many people are there guys plus girls so it's x plus x plus five and then that's where you get your 163 now this is pretty advanced right after that, I'm just proceeding to solve for x. So I expand, expand, I simplify. So here, and then below, I also plus together. So again, this plus this is 2x plus 5 here. After that, I'm going to uh, do the cross multiply. This 2x plus 5 times over. And then uh, I get this. And then of course, in, in this case, I also minus the 700 plus over. And then I, I expand everything. I solve. So x is 6. But be careful, 6 is not the answer because based on our, in this case, 6 is x, so the number of males is 6. But what are they asking? They're asking for total number of students. So actually, the total number of students is this plus this plus this. So it's 6 plus 6 plus 5. That's why the final answer is here, 17. 
Okay, so the next question is uh, the, your classic single fraction, right? I give you two fractions, you need to combine the one fraction. Now, the first thing we need to do in any of this question is you need to factorize everything. So, 3 cannot factorize, 5 cannot factorize, x minus 2 cannot factorize, but this one can. So, you can see that I do the cross method, and now I get x minus 2, x plus 5. So, this becomes this. So, at this stage, I need to look, okay, so there are two fractions, are the denominators the same, these two? Obviously, it's not going to be the same. But, what you notice is, there's an x minus 2 here, there's an x minus 2 here. So actually, this fraction is already done. This is the one that's short of something. So this is short of x plus 5. So I need to multiply x plus 5. And if I do it for the denominator, I need to do it for the numerator too. That's why it's 3 times x plus 5, the below, times x plus 5 here. Then after that, I combine. So it's minus 5. So minus 5. After that, I'm just simplifying this. So this is 3x. 15 minus 5, that's how you get your 3x plus 10. Okay, the next part will be indices. So uh, again, it's simplified into a simple fraction, right? So um, the, the way I do indices is I do not like the power to be negative. It is very scary and uh, you know you, you tend to make mistakes. So the first thing I fix is the negative 3. I don't want negative power. So I'm going to flip the fraction. So this one goes up. This one goes down, and once I flip, the power is negative. So, so from negative 3, if I negative, it becomes positive 3. So uh, this one, I do the same. You see that the x squared is fine, the w is fine. Only the y to the power minus 1 is not good. I don't, again, I don't like negative, so I'm going to shift this w downwards, so that the power becomes 1. This is 1 actually, okay? And then, I'm just simply going to simplify. So, from this, I'm going to uh, so-called remove the tree. And by law of indices, it is just this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube. Every single thing is being cubed. So, to cube this, becomes 6 because it's 2 times 3. X and Y is the same. Cube, cube. Now, the 2 is the tricky one because it's 2 to the power 3. It's not 2 times 3, right? 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2, so that's why it's 8. So over here, after that, everything is done. No brackets, no negative power, I'm simply going to start cancelling. Now, W for power 6, denominator has a W. So if I cancel these two, I'm left with W5. The 8, nothing to cancel, I keep. The X cubed and the numerator X squared. So if these two cancels, I'm left with 1X below. So this one, and this one times together because they are all in the denominator. So uh, W cubed, W times together, W to the power 4. That's it. Okay. After that, we are doing, again, the classic factorization. Now, the general trend is this. If there's four terms in 1, 2, 3, 4, it's almost certain to be factorizing by grouping. So the general strategy is like this. You take the first two, you factorize. You take the sec the next two, you factorize. Generally, these two brackets will be the same, but in this case, it's not. Okay, let's, let's, do it. let's do it first. So between these two, I see I can take out 3, I can take out x. So I take out 3x. I'm left with this. So between these two, I can see that both have y. I can take out y squared. I'm left with this. Now, generally, these two brackets should be the same, but unfortunately, it's not in this case. So, uh, but I can see it's quite close, right? It's x minus 2y, 2y minus x. So, if you negative this, you get the same. So, what I do is I negative this. But to compensate, I need to negative this term too. That's why this becomes minus, and this becomes negative. So, you see, 2y minus x, if you negative the thing, it becomes x minus 2y. So, it becomes like this. At this point, see the two brackets are the same. I'm literally just factorizing out. Just like I take out a 3, I take out an x. I'm taking out x minus 2y here. So I'm left with 3x minus y squared. So i left with this 2 because I took this 2 out. So you must fundamentally understand what we're doing here. We are factorizing the common bracket here. And that's why the answer is this. 
Okay, the next one is indices, solving indices. Now, the point of indices is you always need to uh, reduce it to this state. 3 to the power something equal 3 to the power something. Now, where does the 3 come from? The 3 comes from the base. The base is 9, the base is 3, the base is 27. Now, these 3 numbers have something common. They are all 3 to the power something. So, in order to do indices, you must know your powers quite well. So, once you see 3, 9, 27, you know everything becomes power 3. Now, this is the key step. This 9 to the power x plus 2. Look at this. This is 9 to the power x plus 2. I've not changed a single thing except to rewrite 9 as 3 squared because 9 is 3 squared. This one totally never changed. This one is the same story. Something to the power 2x, something to the power 2x. This something is 27. 27 is 3 cubed. I'm merely replacing the number. And then, I do not want any brackets here. So I'm going to use the law of indices. I'm going to remove so-called remove this bracket. And you need to times this 2. So it's 2 times this. Here is 3 times this. That's why it's 6x. This one is 2x plus 4. Times, times. Okay, then, remember I need this, right? At this stage, I'm quite close already. Here is already done. I got 3 to the power something. There's two trees here. I need to sort of combine it. So by law of indices, the same base times together, the power will plus. Look, it's the law here. Same base, 5. If I times together, the power will plus together. So x plus 2 here. It's the same thing here. It's 2x, minus, uh, 2x plus 4 plus negative x. That's where this line comes from. Okay, so this power equal to this power. And then here it becomes sec 1 max. This one shift. This one shift, divide, that's it. So that's the answer. Okay, so this is uh, the next question will be a very sec 2 question, right? So this is uh, something you learn in sec 2. They already told you one of the answer is x minus 2. Now the significance of this is if you sub x minus 2 into this equation, it satisfies the equation. That means the left and the right will become equal. And that's exactly what we do because there's an unknown here. So we sub it in. See, all your x become minus 2, minus 2. I simplify. In fact, I didn't simplify. I simplify and I cross multiply at the same time. So the 2 times up, this whole thing times up. I see. So this is a simplification. After that, I cross multiply. I get this. I solve. So x is, uh, k is 3. Now, after that, they ask you to find the other value of x. Because this is uh, going to be x squared, right? So there's two answers. So one, of, on, one answer is already minus 2. And now that you know k, you know the full equation, see? This is the full equation because k I already know. k used to be here, right? See? k used to be here. Now k is 3 because I found k already. So I'm going to put it in. Same thing, I'm still cross multiplying. The 2, I'm going to shift over to get equal 0. And this is a typical quadratic that we learn in sec 2. You just simply uh, factorize. If it cannot be factorized, you use the big formula. But in this case, I try the cross method, can. Okay, la, factor, factorize. After that, from these two brackets, I get minus 2 and half. So minus 2 is already one of the answers. Remember, see? They're asking you for the other answer, which is half. Okay, so next. Show that this one is always odd. So uh, there's no so-called rule to show that it's always odd, but a number is either even or odd. So we can show that this one is never even. That, that's one of those ways, right? So if I can factorize out a 2, that means it's always even. So if I cannot factorize out a 2, it must be always odd. So that's how we do it. So in this case, this is our a plus b bracket square. If I expand, it becomes like this. And then you can see that uh, is 4, 12, and 9. Because of the 9, I cannot factorize a 2 out. And hence, I conclude that this must be always odd. Okay, so the next question. Okay, this is coordinate geometry. Because I need to find equation of the line. Now, now in this case, uh, this point happened to be the y-intercept. So it's a bit easier. But I'm going to show the proper way of doing it. No matter what the point is. So um, when we have equation of line, I always need two things. I need the gradient and one point so that I can find the equation of the line. So the gradient is uh, not very obvious. 
but the point is pretty obvious because it says cut the y-axis at 1 so that means it's 0, 1 so that's the point so the gradient how? since I got two points I'm going to use the gradient formula and find the gradient so it's y minus y x minus x so that's here and it's equal to 1 so the gradient is 1 and this is the point so I'm going to show the proper method so once I have the gradient because a, a line is always y equal mx plus c so the m happens to be 1 because the gradient is 1 so it's y equal 1x plus c so to find the c I need to sub the point in so I sub in this case I sub 2, 3 because this is one of the points right if you sub 0, 1 also can doesn't matter so I sub so if my x is 2 uh, the y is 3 so y is 3 here x is 2 here after that is 3 minus 2 equal to c so c is 1 so once I get c is 1 it's equal to y equal to 1x plus 1 because c is 1 that's why this is the answer okay so the next part is um explain why this line over here the part a is answer and this line uh, whether they intersect or not so you must know that the criteria to intersect two lines will only intersect when they are not parallel right if two lines are parallel see like, like that they will never meet you can keep going you will never meet or if they are not parallel at some point they're going to cut okay so that's how it's that's, that's, so that's the theory here so we need to get the gradient so this line's gradient is one it's very clear but what about this line's gradient so you can see from here just that it's not directly seeable so uh, from this one I, I want to make it y equal to one uh, mx plus c so it's one y it cannot be three y so I everything divided by three so this one become one six divided by three is two so the gradient is actually two so this line's gradient is one this line's gradient is two so are they the same they are not the same the gradients are different so the lines will intersect that's it Okay, the next one is prime factor. This is very easy. Simply put, prime factors means you keep dividing by prime numbers starting from the smallest one, which is 2, then 3, then 5, then 7, then 11. So, same thing. 7, 8, 4. You have to do all the way until cannot. I get 49, cannot already. Then I realize, okay, the next number is 7. So, 7, 7, 7, 7, until you get 1. So, there's how many 2s? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it's 2 to the power of 4. And then, 7 got 2 times, 7 squared, that's it. Okay, then um, we're going to explain why this 784 is the perfect square. Now please remember, this is the exact same number in part 1, same number. Right, so I write the number here for reference. Um, so a perfect square, the definition is the powers are multiples of 2. Now the multiples of 2 is, I think, well known. But what you do know is, what do you call this 4 and 2 here? They are actually the powers of the prime factors. Powers because they are powers. Prime factors because the, the factors are all prime numbers. So that's what you are supposed to write. The powers of the prime factors are multiples of 2. If this were perfect cube, it must be multiples of 3 and so on. Okay. The next question, we're going to skip some of the difficult ones. The next question we should always know how to do is this one. This is the classic uh, directly proportionate. So uh, the theory goes like this. If it's directly proportionate, these two things are the things that we're talking about. So one thing is m, the other thing is 2p. So it's m equal to k times 2p. So this equal to k times this. And that's the uh, the what, what it means by directly proportionate. This is standard stuff. After that, they will always give you a pair of numbers. So you can see that they give you m, they give you p. And from here, what's the purpose? Is to help you solve for k. So I sub it in, sub in, sub in. So it becomes like this. And then I'm solving for k. So this is 6k. I divide the 6 over, it becomes 10. So 10, uh, k is 10. So with this, now that I know k, this is the real equation because it's m equal to 10 times 2p. So this is the actual real equation. And then they will ask you to find something. So they want to find P and they give you M. So M is 178. M is 178. So I swap these two, 178. I solve for P. So that's exactly what I do here. Okay. I'm going to go through half of this question. Now, when it comes to inversely proportionate, 
the concept is pretty similar. It's still two things. One thing in this case is y. The other thing is cube of x. Now this is English, right? Cube of x. If I cube the x, it becomes x cubed. Lah. Okay. So when it's inversely proportional, is this thing equal to k divided by this thing? It looks like this. Okay. As compared to direct proportional, is this is equal to k times this. If it's inverse, is this equal to k divided by this? That's all. So you write this down, and that's how you start. So the rest of the question I'm not going through because uh, it's pretty advanced. I just want to touch on the inverse thing. Okay, so this is uh, our typical sets question. So there are 30 students in the class. So total is 30. And they tell you 24 pass English, 20 pass uh, math. I still do write the number inside this. So the, the first rule is total is 30. So all your numbers add together must be 30. It's common sense. If you add these two numbers, you realize that it's 44. How I got 30? That means there are 14 people. They are extra, which suggests that 14 people pass both maths and English. So we start here, 14. And then English only got 24. So English is here, right? So these two numbers add together must be 24. This must be 10. Same thing, only 20 pass math. So this whole circle, which is math, must be 20. So if this is 14, this must be 6. That's it. After that, we're doing, uh, doing the shading thing. So this is intersection. That means you must satisfy both. So I do, so we do the one tick, two tick thing, right? So um, A. A is this whole circle. That's why I tick here, I tick here. Because this whole, these two parts are A. After that, I want B prime. So B prime is anything that's not inside B. So this one, the one. So I'm going to tick here and tick here. After that, since it is intersection, it must satisfy both. That means it must have two ticks. So this is the only area with two ticks. That's why this is the answer. Finish. Okay, next. This is our uh, similar shape. Again, uh, this question never says similar shape, but you have a cone and you have water inside. So actually the cone and the water is similar. They just never say. It's pretty advanced, right? So uh, what we do is, um, the key thing is they give you the length. They give you the length. So this is what I always draw. From the length, if you need to change to area, you must square. Length change to volume, you must cube. See? And if you change back, you cube root and square root accordingly. So um, they give you the length. And they tell you the volume of the cone is of the water is half the volume of the cone. So the full cone divided by the water is two. Okay. So what's the height? The height is twenty. The water's height is uh, h. So twenty over h is the ratio of the height. Now I want volume. So I want volume, right? So I need to cube both of them. See, from the height to get volume, I must cube so 20 over h if i cube it becomes 8000 over h cube and if i divide the two of them it's equal to 2 over 1 because it is twice what's the word twice but it's half okay so the cone is two times of the water so from here i actually just solve for k so uh, h i just cross multiply i get this then cube root both sides that's the answer Okay, so the next one will be similar triangles. So uh, they ask you to show that this is similar. So the first thing I do is uh, A, C, B square, this one, right? So this is similar to this. So I draw it like that. I just draw a bigger one. After that, I'm going to match the letters. So uh, based on this triangle, A, C, B, I A, C, B it. After that, I look at the letters. A and E must match. So A is here, E must be here. C and C must match, so C is here, C must be here. B and D, B, D. So that is how it looks like when it's placed side by side. Then, um, as with all similar triangles, um, the first check is always AA can or not. Then you can see that the parallel line, the parallel line, if you do enough, you know that parallel line surely is going to be alternate angle or some sort of corresponding angle. So you can see that based on these two parallel lines, these two angles are the same. So the question is, on these two triangles, are they the same corner of the triangle? So we need to check. So C, A, B. So C, A, B. So this one, right? I shape. This one, uh, D, E, C. So D, E, C. You can see that the shaded is the same corner. That's great. 
because we want it to be the same corner. And then the next two, uh, you can you can do this and this, or the other easier one is you can do this too because it's vertically uh, vertically opposite angle. So again, ACB here, then DCE here again it's the same corner of the triangle so with this you know clearly it's going to be a the rest is just writing it down so i'm just going to label um i say this equal to this the reason is alternate angle because of the z alternate angle and then these two are the same because of vertically opposite angle you have a cross the one these two are always the same this part of trigo i think you learned this in sec one so now that you show that two sides are the same angle it is a mirror test and that's it conclude so the working needs to look like this there's no other way to write the working because this approving question is pretty strict after that um, they ask you to find some give you some numbers so uh, again i draw the simple triangles i fill in the numbers 4 5 10 and i need to find bd so bd i realize hey, there's no bd here so i need to look here so bd is the long one so it's actually uh, BC plus CD. So I come back to the triangle, BC, CD. So that's why uh, it's these two plus together is the answer. So I look, I got the ratio here because five to 10, I times two. So by law of common sense, four here must be eight times two. Uh, it's similar, right? So four plus eight is the answer, 12. Okay, we're reaching the end. So this is our uh, standard pentagon or rather polygon kind of question in this case i need to find x so uh tell you this regular pentagon regular polygon don't know how many sides but pentagon we know is five in fact the even draw for is one two three four five five sided so with this in order to find x it's quite obvious that it's three six zero minus this minus this okay so let's do the easy one the one four four comes from here because it's regular, every single interior angle is the same. So this is a straight line, right? So 180 minus this, you get this one, same. This is the, the more difficult one. Because it's five sided, it's five minus two times 180 divided by five. Because if you just do this, without the minus, uh, divided by five, this gives you the total interior angle. So one, two, three, four, five, add together is this. But I just want one of them, right? So I divide by 5. That's all. So I get 108. Then after that, it's just 360 minus the two numbers. Okay, I believe this is the last question. So this is our classic pyramid. In this case, I just give you the pyramid. Straight away, I ask you to find the volume. Now this is uh, a bit more complex because a lot of things you need to find yourself. But you must first know the volume of a pyramid first. It's always going to be base area times the vertical height times one third. Any sharp pointy shapes have one third. So cone also one third. Okay, so the base is quite obvious. The base is the squ uh, square here. It's 10, 10, right? That's why it's 100. No problem. It's the vertical height that you're missing the point. So the vertical height is E x so you notice i label my own x here i drop perpendicular down this blue color dotted line is the height i want not the 15 the 15 is the slanted one it is also not e to here this is the we call it slanted height it's not this one this is for surface area that's where the, a lot of people don't get it so in order to find this dotted blue color line you need to do a, a few extra steps in between it's not so simple so the plan here is um, because I need to use some sort of Tocaso or some sort of uh, Pythagoras theorem, right? So the plan is this. In this case, I did it like that. I, I draw, I use this triangle on the ground. My plan is to find XC first. Why XC? Because with XC, I can draw this triangle. This one, XC, and then EC. So that, that, so that right angle triangle is going to give me this dotted line so let's settle xc first so you can see that i draw this out five five so five come from where this distance is five because it's halfway right so this whole thing is 10 this must be five similarly this is also five that's where the five five comes from and then if i do pythagoras theorem five square plus five square equal to this one square so that's the pythagoras theorem here is seven point something once i get this i'm going to draw this triangle here the 15, the one I just found, and the dotted line that I want. So it's over here. Okay, so this is the 7 point something. 
this is the 15 this is the vertical height that I want so again it's this square this square and together is this square so ex right so ex square plus this square is equal to 15 square and then this one I minus over I get my ex so my ex is uh, 13 point something at this stage I have everything ready I got this I got this I got this so that's why the volume is one third times the base area the base area is a square so it's 10 times 10 times the vertical height calculator press done okay so let's see oh sorry we still got one more okay so this again is a long question so uh, they give you this uh, triangular prism at the end of the day they want angle of depression of B from E so when you have from E that means the eyes is at E I'm looking down at B so E is here I'm looking down at B so, so that angle on top is the one I want now the misconception is everybody is using E B D now this triangle is slanted when you do any sort of angle of elevation or depression the triangle must be upright that's why it needs to drop perpendicular down and link to B so that's a, a thing, the thing that a lot of people don't know so I'm going to draw this final triangle first it's B X E I'm going to draw it right at the bottom so from E look down at B this is the angle of depression but these two angles are always going to be the same because it's parallel line, parallel line so it's the alternate angle, right? so these two angles are the same I need to find this can already in order to find this angle there are three sides here I just need two of them so the question is which two sides is easier to find my choice will clearly be to find EX and this BE so where are they? EX is here BE is here I just briefly explain how I use uh, this triangle to find EX because I got angle, I got side I can torcaso this out I got it after that to find this BE I use this triangle B, uh, B, E, D and this is right angle triangle because it's a, uh, a prism right so I this, this two uh, Pythagoras theorem I get this B, E so that's what, what all the working here is all about and once I get these two numbers to get this again I use trigo again it's just sine this angle equal to this over this so see sine this angle equal to 3 over this 3 over this and then just solve that's it so I believe that's all the questions I want to go through so hopefully you can learn to really explain to others how to do it because unless you do it you will never really learn so hope you've learned something thank you and bye bye